Dear little ones, before you dive into the story, I have some exciting news. I'm launching a brand new show on Patreon. The more support I get from you, the better the videos will be. Longer, more detailed, and filled with all the content you love. Your help makes all the difference. Mary lay in bed at 2 a.m. The house so still that when the phone rang, it was as if it had come alive, vibrating with urgency. She grabbed it before the second ring, saw the University of Winchester on the caller ID, and immediately thought, oh no. That was where Tim, her son, attended college. Her stomach flipped as she answered, her voice quivering. Hello? Hi, this is Charles Winston. I'm the head of student housing at the University of Winchester. Her heart sank. Is my son in trouble? No, no, he's not in trouble. But there's been an incident. What kind of incident? Charles hesitated. It's probably best if you come down to the hospital. I think it's something we shouldn't discuss over the phone. Mary's hand shook as she jotted down the address. 545 South Entrance, Iron Hospital. She hung up, her mind racing. She threw on an old pair of mom jeans and a hoodie, grabbed her keys, and hurried out the door. Her station wagon groaned as it started, as old as her worries but less reliable. Rain pelted the windshield, and the wipers screeched in protest, barely keeping up. Building 135 stood quietly in the rain, under a sign that read mental health and wellness. Oh no, oh God, no. Tim had been calling her for weeks, complaining about the pressure of his physics courses and how hard it all was. She hadn't listened closely enough. Now, here she was, standing in front of a receptionist who, with dead eyes, asked, How can I help you? My son, Mary stammered. Tim, what happened to him? I can't discuss it here. Please, take a seat. The doctor will be with you shortly. Mary sat down, her mind spinning as a game show played on the waiting room TV. She couldn't focus on it, couldn't focus on anything except the pit in her stomach that kept growing. After what felt like hours, a man in a white lab coat approached her. Mary? She stood too quickly, dizzy with nerves. Yes, that's me. Let's speak in my office. His badge read, Doctor. Charles. She followed him, heart pounding. Once inside, the doctor gestured to a chair, but Mary could barely sit still. Is Tim okay? She blurted. He's stable, the doctor reassured her, but he won't be able to return to school for a while. Why not? She asked, dread nodding in her chest. We think Tim had a nervous breakdown. He barricaded himself in his dorm room. He hadn't eaten, hadn't slept, hadn't even drunk any water. He was passed out when we found him. He had an accident. He defecated in the corner of the room. It took several security guards to get him out. We had to clean him up and give him something to calm him down. Mary's hands gripped the arms of her chair. Can I see him? The doctor led her down the hallway to a room where Tim lay in bed. He looked small, fragile like a little boy again. His eyes fluttered open when he heard her voice. Mom? He said softly. She rushed to him, wrapping him in her arms. I'm here, sweetheart, she whispered, kissing his forehead. I missed you, mommy, he said, his voice small, like he was five years old again. Mary winced. Mommy? He hadn't called her that in years. Then the smell hit her, strong, like ammonia. What's that smell? She asked, not really thinking. Then she noticed the outline beneath his pajama pants. Something thick, bulky. Tim, what are you wearing? He looked away, ashamed. I haven't been making it to the bathroom, especially at night. So they... they put me in these. His voice was barely a whisper. Mary's breath caught. A diaper? Tim nodded, humiliated. He pulled up his pants and she could see how thick it was underneath. I love you, Tim she said, trying to hide her shock. But I have to go talk to the doctor for a moment, okay? Back in the office, Mary collapsed into the chair. What's happening to my son? She asked. The doctor sighed. We don't know for sure, 
he seems to be functioning at the cognitive level of a four-year-old. He's regressed. We're going to have to keep him here for a while. Give him 24-hour care. Can't I take him home? You can, the doctor said carefully. But I wouldn't advise it. He needs professional care right now. Your son is physically an adult, but mentally. He's not. Mary felt the weight of the world pressing down on her. I'm taking him home, she declared. I'll manage. The doctor gave a resigned nod. Okay, but you'll need help. We'll send a nurse to your home. Mary nodded numbly. As she left, she felt like she was walking through a fog. By the time she pulled into her driveway, it was nearly 4 a.m. She sat in the car for a long time staring at the dark windows of her house. When she finally went inside, she collapsed into bed, too exhausted to think. The next day, she woke up at noon, which was unlike her. She usually rose at five o'clock. But today was different. Everything was different. She made herself toast and coffee, waiting for the hospital team to arrive and prep the house for Tim. At 1.15, the doorbell rang. A social worker named Sue stood on the porch along with a few other men carrying equipment. Are you ready? Sue asked with a smile that didn't reach her eyes. Mary showed them to Tim's room. They installed a bed with high walls and a zip-up mesh enclosure. This will keep him safe at night, Sue explained. Mary just nodded, too overwhelmed to protest. They moved to the bathroom next, where Sue explained Tim would need to be bathed, as showers were now out of the question. Fine, Mary said, her voice hollow. He's my son. I'll do whatever it takes. When they finally left, she collapsed onto the couch and cried. She cried until she couldn't anymore. Then she wiped her face and whispered, I can do this. I have to do this. The week dragged on as she prepared for Tim's return. She stocked up on supplies, rearranged his room, and tried to brace herself for what was to come. When the day finally arrived, she drove back to the hospital, took a deep breath, and walked through the doors. End of chapter one. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Mommy Sarah's Storytime. If you enjoyed the stories, please support the channel by liking and subscribing. Remember, my channel is not monetized, and I write most of the content myself. On occasions when I don't, it's sourced through emails from trusted contacts. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you're able to, consider making a donation to support our channel. Your support means a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing more stories with you.